Hi everybody, I'm Corinne Blackstone and welcome to my craft room. I'm so happy to have you here today and before we get started, be sure that you're subscribed, that way you don't miss out on any of the crafty content we have coming. Today's video, we are gonna talk about direct to film transfers. Let me know in the comments if you're experienced with DTV, have you used it before, are you curious about it, and whatever questions you might have about it because if I don't answer it in this video, I'll make sure to let you know in the comments. I'm going to show you how to design this little design that we made on the sweatshirt using the 143 website. It's so easy, so cost effective, and I think this is a great way if you're somebody looking to get into starting a t-shirt business and you don't want to do sublimation, this is a really cost effective way to do it. Now you might be saying, okay, so you said that DTV is direct to film transfers, but what makes them so different versus HTV or sublimation? And that's an absolutely wonderful question. So the one thing is there's no weeding required with this product like with HTV. So even if you were to use a printable HTV product, you're still going to have to weed away parts or if you're using the four lights, you can only do it on light colored shirts. With sublimation, while you're not having to weed, you do have to use a specific fabric, meaning polyester, and you do have to use light shirts. DTF can be done on cotton, polyester, all the fabrics, blends, so you're really open to just about any shirt that you want and you can do it on any color that you want. Because these are printed with a white ink under them, you can see how bright and vibrant the colors are against a black shirt. You cannot sublimate on a black shirt, so you wouldn't see this image if you tried. Plus, there's no such thing as white sublimation ink, so any white parts that you use are always going to be transparent. With DTF, there is white ink, as you can see with the little speckles around my design. The other thing that I really love about the DTF versus like a regular HTV or a printable HTV is it's a lot stretchier than those products. It's definitely not as stretchy as sublimation since sublimation is physically dyeing the fabric where the DTV is still a product that sits on top of the fabric, but I would say that it's still quite thin compared to HTV. Especially if you're doing something with a lot of colors where you need to add quite a few layers. This is just one single kind of layer. It doesn't feel super heavy. Even though I have a ton of color on this, it's not a very heavy feeling product. Where if I were to do HTV and I had to put like six colors, it would feel very heavy. Now this does still feel on the shirt, like you can feel physically feel the product, but it's not nearly as raised up as HTV. You can run your finger over it and you can feel the edge, but it's not like you can catch it as easily as you can with an HTV product. Now, unlike sublimation, like I said, it doesn't dye the fabric. It does still sit on top, but I do think it's a really quality product. The wash and wear on these are fantastic as long as you've pressed them correctly and then you just wash them correctly. I do recommend washing them in cold water, inside out, tumble dry low if you have to iron, do any like drying. If you can, line dry is always gonna be the best for the longevity of your shirt. Whether you're doing HTV, printable HTV, DTF, DTG, all the prints, that's just gonna be a way that's gonna give you a little bit more of a longevity than drying them. Now this is definitely a great low cost option if you're looking into doing like shirt business, like I said. So this size was only $4.50. You can get everything from a pocket size all the way up to a 3X size. You can do gang sheets with them, which just mean multiple images on one sheet of plastic, which is the carrier sheet. And you can really go crazy, make your own designs, figure out what you want. You can design in other software and upload it to their website, but I'm gonna show you how to create this just on the website. It's super easy, only takes a few minutes. So let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna start at the 143 website. I will link directly down below how to access this section. But what we're gonna do today is make our own custom DTF print, and it's really easy. We're gonna be using some elements that we're gonna bring in from our computer, and then we're also gonna use some elements they already have in their library to create this. So what you'll do is I'm gonna use the custom DTF print right here, and you're just gonna simply click on this section. From here, what we can do is we can do image upload or layout designer, either way works, but we'll use layout designer because we're going to be adding some things to this. Now I will say I still kind of fumble around with this a little bit. Um, I've done a few of them, so you're gonna wanna play around with it, 
kind of figure out um, how you want to design and what your design wants to look like. But the best way to learn is to just play with it. And you can always just cancel out, not buy it, just play. But over here is where you can kind of pick your sizes. So there's like a pocket size, a youth size, small, medium, then you have large, extra large 2X, and then these two are like really, really big. These are for like the gang sheets. But I'm gonna do a large size design. Then all I wanna do here is I'm gonna choose new and this little plus sign. Now from here, I can choose an image, add text, or add a shape. So I'm gonna choose image. And it's going to open up and ask me from my desktop where I want to find my image from. So I'm going to go ahead and find where I saved that. I'm going to use one of these colorful dragons. I just think they're super fun, super cute, and just a really cool way that you can use something really, really colorful without having to do sublimation or printable HTV. DTF is a great option for doing something like this. I'm going to choose this one with the little cloud because I think he's adorable and I'm gonna go ahead and add it. Now it might take a second to add, but once it's in there, you're good. Now you can see that he is quite large for this. So if you click on him, you can actually change how big he is. Cause I do want him to be a little bit smaller so that I can fit some text and some other things on here. And then in the layer setting, I do want him to be centered on my layer. You can move him up and down from the top and the bottom just by kind of using this little slide bar. So that again can help you kind of get it where you want it to sit on your design. Once you're pretty happy where he is, go ahead and close out that little section. Now we're gonna add a few elements to this and it's a really fun thing to do. So the first thing again, we'll hit that little plus sign and for this one, we're gonna add text. And for this text, I'm gonna add the words, just a girl who likes. So all you have to do is just type in your text and you can make the text whatever you want it to be. And then here, we're gonna go ahead and center it again, and I'm gonna choose a font. Now there's a ton of different fonts in here, but if you wanna use a font that's not in here, you would have to bring it in like you did the dragon. The font that I'm gonna use for this one is called Ribeye. I just think it looks really, really cute, really adorable. And I am going to make it quite a bit larger and I'm gonna go ahead and click center again so that it centers that image. Anytime you change like the sizing, you'll see that it kind of goes off center. So you always just wanna recenter it when you're done, if you want it centered, it's up to you. Um, that was way too big. So I need to size it down a little bit more. Um, I'm just going to kind of find a size that looks pretty good for my design and we can resize things before we're fully done with this. Now I do want to add a, um, a stroke, which is right down here. So it's, um, kind of like an offset, but the problem being, I want to add a white stroke to this and I'm not going to be able to see it against this white background. So what I'm going to do is up here at the top where it says background, I'm just gonna change my background color to just about anything as long as it's not white. That's gonna help me see my stroke against the background and we'll make it white again when we're done. So I'm gonna choose stroke color and like I said, I want it to be white. And the reason I'm doing white is because I want it to uh, be able to be seen if I put this on a black shirt, which is my intention. I'm, I'm a black shirt girly. So what I wanna do from here is I just need to slide the little slide bar out until I'm happy with how thick the white offset or stroke is. And I think that looks pretty good. So I'm fairly happy with that. So I'm gonna just go ahead and click close. So far, I think we're looking pretty good. Now I do wanna add another set of text and I wanted to say dragons. So I'm just gonna add text, type in the word dragons if I spell it right. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna center it. I'm going to change my font. And remember we used ribeye, but you can kind of click through, find whatever font you want. I wanna change that stroke color to white. Just go up here, make sure it's white. And then just change that stroke width. And I like to kind of keep it close to where the um, other words are so I can just see if that stroke looks about even. That looks pretty good, so I'm gonna close this. Now I can actually drag my image or my text to wherever I want it on my screen, which is super helpful because you're able to really lay out stuff the way you want it to be. So I can definitely make my dragon bigger now that I've kind of got everything set. So if I wanna make him bigger, I can just drag this out a little bit and just make him a little bit larger. Again, it's really up to you and the way you want it to look. There's not really a right or wrong way to design. It's up to you and the way you want your design to be. Now I do wanna add just a little bit something more fun to this. 
So in order to do that, watch what we can do. This is really, really fun. So I just think it's a little boring and I'd like to add some splatter to it. What I wanna do is go up where it says library, up here at the top. And I believe I found it under patterns. So you can click on patterns. And then I found it under effects, but click through, find some stuff. There's so many cool things to choose from, but I know mine that I used was under patterns. Now you can choose all sorts of things. There's scratches in black and white. There's grunge spots in white and black, and then this electrifying. I used the grunge spots in white, and I think those are like perfect for what I want this to look like. So I'm just gonna go add pattern to selection. It will add it and then just close the library by using that little drop down box. Once you've added that pattern, what you'll need to do is add a shape. So I'm gonna simply click the little plus sign over here and I need to add a shape. In this case, I'm just gonna use a square because I think that's gonna work just fine for the pattern we want. And then where it says pattern right here, click on that and it's gonna be really hard to see, but it's gonna be this first one right here, which is the grunge spots. So you can see here that we have these little grunge spots. Now you can kind of put them wherever you want. I kind of want them all over. So I am gonna go ahead and add a couple of layers. Now you'll notice right now that it's over the dragon. That's totally fine, I'm fine with that. But what we'll do is we'll kind of adjust it in just a minute and I'll show you how to do that. If you've worked with the design space um, items at all, you're gonna be fine to kind of correct this and to make the spots go behind everything. So let me just add the rest of our little spots here. Super easy to do, really simple. Like I said, just add a shape. So you're gonna add shape, and you can use any shape you want, but in this case, a square is gonna work great for what we're doing. Click on that pattern that you want, and then you can just simply kind of drag it around your um, image. So I'm gonna do one more just so that we make sure that it fully covers our design. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add that shape again. Like I said, you're gonna wanna play around with this, kind of get used to using it. It is um, definitely a little bit of a learning curve, but once you do it a couple times, you'll be fine. So now that I've got those little white spots, you'll notice that they're all on top of our words and our dragon, and I don't want that. And actually, I think I kind of wanna move these ones up a little bit. And I'm gonna move these ones up a little, and then I'm gonna move these ones just around. So you can kind of play around with them until you're happy with the way that your speckles look. I think they look good. So now what I'm going to do is I need to take each of the layers that are the speckles, which are labeled as SHP, and you can kind of hold your mouse over. And can you see the little speckles in that gray section? What I wanna do is I wanna make sure that the um, like design ends up so that it's under the dragon, so that it's under all of the other elements. So it's a little bit backwards compared to design space because I'll show you with the dragon. If I drag the dragon down a little bit, let me kind of drag him down. You'll see that some of the spots now are behind our dragon, but we still have spots above him because we need the dragon really to be pretty much all the way at the bottom. Now I do find that it works best if you go just a couple at a time um, to get him down to the bottom, just for whatever reason, and it's just a design thing in here. Um, that's just kind of how it works. So I'm just gonna drag the um, words just so they're here as well, because I want them to be under all of the spots. I don't want the spots to be on top of the words. I want those to be below them. Now again, we're gonna change our background back to the white, because we don't want it to print in a color. <laughs> we just make sure it's white. And right here we have our design. Now you can name your design. So I'm just gonna call it Dragon Rainbow and you can call it whatever you want that makes sense for you. Then all you have to do is choose Save Project. Now I highly recommend saving your project that way you, know, you don't lose it or anything, but it's really easy to design with the software that's built into the 143 website. Like I said, take some time and play around with it, but you'll definitely figure it out pretty quickly. Now it does take a few moments to save, so I'm gonna go ahead and let it finish saving. And once it's done, what it's going to do is it's going to show you what it will look like on the DTF print. So it looks really good to me. Again, the white spots are a little hard to see, but that's totally fine. Now what's great about this is that you can add this to the cart and then you can either continue shopping, view cart, or you can just close this and start all over. It's really up to you and how you want to do it. So you can do it in a lot of ways. Now, once we've got it and we're happy, and let's say we wanna go ahead and go to our cart, just close that out and you can go over to your cart and let's view that. 
and you can order this in a bunch of sizes, um, but you will need to make sure that you have saved it. Now it's $4.50 for a 10 by 10, which is what you're gonna use on most adult large shirts. They start at $2 and go up from there based on sizing but you can order as many or as few as you want. So if you just want one of these designs, you can absolutely order just one. There is no minimum order required for 143 vinyl. I've also found that they're actually a lot cheaper than some of the other websites, especially because you don't have to have a specific order amount. So really great way to use these. They offer everything from the four by four pocket sizes all the way up. Now, once I clicked order and checked out, it only took a few days for this to arrive to me and I'm gonna show you how to press these because it's so simple. You may never wanna go back to weeding HTV again. We have our black sweatshirt laid out. Now this is just a 100% cotton sweatshirt, but again, great thing with DTF is that you can use it on lots of different fabrics. So it's a really versatile product. So what you'll wanna do is take your design and it goes with the design up, but it is a plastic like carrier sheet. So you'll feel on the back where this is gonna feel a little bit textured. So that is the side that's gonna go on to your product. So the white side goes down with your pretty colored design straight up. Now there's gonna be some plastic around it, that's fine, and you can trim that plastic down. I did trim this one down a little bit just so I could get a better vision. And then with a hoodie, I like to do a little bit more than three fingers down. And then all I'm gonna do is just use my hands to kind of get this fairly centered and straight. Now I do recommend some heat tape for these because this is not sticky at all and the heat tape is going to help hold it down where you want it to sit. So just like when I do sublimation, I just put some heat tape on each of the corners of the sheet here, just to make sure that it doesn't move. And get messed up while I'm trying to work with it. So I think that looks pretty good. I'm just kind of gonna hold it up now and look at it so I can see if it looks straight. I think it looks good to go. So now what we'll need to do is get our heat press set. They send you a sheet with directions, which is fantastic. So for our directions, we're gonna pre-press the garment to remove wrinkles and moisture. I did already do that. Um, just keep that in mind. I already did that, I just didn't show it. Then you wanna position the transfer into desired location on the garment, which we just did. You're gonna press at 345 degrees for 25 seconds with medium firm pressure without a heat protectant sheet, meaning no Teflon sheet, no parchment paper, no butcher paper, nothing like that. The press is gonna press directly to this. Then you're gonna allow the transfer to cool completely before removing the carrier film, which is this clear sheet you can see. Then what you wanna do is press for an additional 10 seconds this time you do want to use a heat resistance sheet. So you want to replace that Teflon sheet, put that parchment paper over it, put that butcher paper over it, whatever kind of paper you use, you want to put that over it. But the first thing to do, pre-press, which like I said, we did. Then we're going to go ahead and line up our design, which we did. Now we want to press this at 345 degrees for 25 seconds. It's time for our first press. So I've put my hoodie sideways on my press. I just find it super helpful to keep the hood off to the side. Uh, I do have a pressing pillow under this just to allow for that more even pressure. And then I've taken my Teflon sheet that you guys usually see magneted to my press. I've taken that off. So we're going to go ahead and press this for 25 seconds at 345 degrees. Now that that first press is done, go ahead and open your press and you wanna let this cool 100% before you remove this clear paper. Now I will say I do find it cools a lot quicker if I move it over to my table. So I'm gonna go ahead and move it off my press, let my press sit and wait for it to cool. And then we'll have to do our second press with our Teflon sheet without this carrier sheet on it. These cool pretty quickly. It cooled in about two, three minutes. So we'll go ahead and peel off the carrier sheet. I always just take the tape off of at least one side of it before I peel. And then all you have to simply do is just peel away this clear backing. And you'll see that your design stays on your shirt. Look at that, so fun, so cool. But now what I wanna do is I'm gonna take this back over to our heat press. We're gonna put a Teflon sheet on top of it. So I'm just gonna use the one that's normally on my press and we're gonna go ahead and press this again. And for this one, we're just gonna press it for 10 seconds. 
The shirt's on the press. I'm going to put that Teflon sheet over it, and then I'm going to press it for just 10 seconds. And that's going to make it cured, ready to go, super easy to deal with DTF. You're going to wash this. It's going to be super great for wash and wear. And there's our press for our 10 seconds. Go ahead and take off your Teflon sheet, and your shirt is ready to go. I wanted to give you guys an up-close view of this. It's so cute, so pretty, and the colors are, I mean, just mind-blowingly bright. This is a wonderful product, and this is something I will say that I highly recommend. If you are somebody who is looking to get into like a t-shirt business, this is a really great way to, rather than have to spend money on a sublimation, um, like printer, and then you'll only be able to use light colored shirts and polyester, um, or rather than using HTV where you're going to need to weed all the pieces, press them, this is a wonderful option. So this entire design cost me $4.50. The shirt alone, I think was, I want to say like $6.50 for the hoodie. So you're looking at about $11 cost in materials. And then if you already have a heat press, obviously we don't need to count that. But you can really make some really super colorful designs, really crisp lines. I absolutely love how the wing looks, like the little fading. So beautiful. So I wanted to do something that had a lot of colors, a lot of color shifting in it, so that you could really get a look at how those DTF prints look. They're absolutely stunning. Like, look at the colors in the tail. You can see all that beautiful shading, like, right along this edge. You can see kind of the scales that they put into here. So you get a lot of detail using a DTF print. Now, like I said at the beginning of the video, yes, the DTF is a little bit heavier than sublimation because it's not actually dyeing the fabric. It is a product that sits on top. But this offers you a lot more stretch than HTV or even a printable HTV. It also feels quite a bit lighter on the shirt as well. And the wash and wearability of this is fantastic. Now I will say I do recommend that you still wash with this inside out, cold water only. And I would recommend tumble dry low if you have to dry it. But I like to, anything like this, I do try to line dry only. Now, if you guys have any questions, please, by all means, let me know in those comments down below. And if you're looking to do DTF, let me know because I really want to know if you guys are wanting some more information on this. If this is something that you want to get into, want to look into, do you want to start printing your own at home? By all means, I will definitely look into that more if you want me to. I hope you all have a wonderful day and as always, happy crafting.